Hello, welcome to the channel. My name's Wolf, and today, I'm going to talk about the lore of Super Mario. Of course, that begs the question, what lore? While Nintendo's other franchise, The Legend of Zelda, is well loved for its complex story, Mario is very different. There's not a consistent storyline connecting the games, and each of the series that tried to do world building for Mario have, at the time of writing this, ended. So, rather than talk about a few special Mario games and force read my own headcanon into them, I'm going to tell you about a Mario that isn't quite the one seen in any particular game or series, but draws from all of them. With that said, let's dive into the setting of Mario, the Mushroom Kingdom. The Mushroom Kingdom is known for the quantity and variety of fungus that grows there. Its domain is a large territory filled with natural resources, which was previously isolated from the rest of the world for decades or centuries. The humans living there adapted to symbiosis with fungus, becoming the toadstool people. In those days, they were divided into tribes and nations, many of which were migratory or nomadic. They fought wars amongst themselves and sometimes struggled against the brown mushroom monsters which came up out of the earth. Their isolation was not to last, however. Across the eastern ocean, in the harsh northern regions of a foreign continent, there lived reptile peoples called the Koopas, who survived by marauding and pillaging their neighbors. As their seafaring ability increased, they began to explore for better and more easily conquered land. In these explorations, they discovered the toadstools and succeeded in seizing much of the eastern coast from them and continued to press westward into the heart of the country. This made it necessary for the toads to build castles and walls to defend themselves, sometimes even forming alliances against their common enemy. In the meantime, across the western ocean, a powerful empire had emerged. The Saracens had conquered and unified the Birabuto, Muda, Istan, and Chai kingdoms. Many ships went out in search of trade and new territories, and one such ship discovered the territory inhabited by the toads, and returned loaded with strange new plants and mushrooms, as well as descriptions of the abundant land, which, on the west coast, had no cities, walls, or castles yet to defend it and was inhabited by a short and uncivilized race of mushroom men. The Emperor of Sarasaland was determined to conquer this land as well, but since it was a long journey across the sea, he first sent scouts to survey how the natives might be conquered. They confirmed that the land was greatly desirable and not well defended, but also gave him news that the Koopas sought to take the land as well. Therefore, the Emperor devised a scheme. He invited the Toads to send ambassadors back to Sarasaland, where he would show them his wealth, what mighty kingdoms he had conquered, and the strength of his armies, so that they would return to their nations and tell what they had seen. This plan was carried out, and when the ambassadors of the Toads told their peoples what they had seen, everyone was in awe of the Saracens. Now the Saracen king made an offer to the Toads, saying that if they would submit to the Saracens and be ruled by them, Saracaland would repulse all invaders, including the Koopas. But if they refused, the Saracens would conquer both the Toads and the Koopas in war. The Chief Toads held council, and seeing that they were otherwise doomed, surrendered to the Emperor. The Saracens then came in force and routed the Koopas, who fled, some to the north where they lived in rocks and ash, others to southern islands. Afterwards, part of the Saracen military returned to Sarasaland 
and part remained to establish the rule of the Saracen king appointed by the emperor, and thus the Mushroom Kingdom was born. The first king began his rule by establishing governors over various districts and constructing a walled city and castle of the old Saracen style. He also oversaw the founding of port cities and suitable harbors. His son succeeded him, but the son's reign was cut short by an outbreak of fungal disease, which was exceedingly hard on all the Saracens. Children survived it better than adults, and all that was left of the newly established royal family was the young princess, granddaughter of the first king of the Toadstools. The princess was not of age to rule, and Toadsworth became regent of the Mushroom Kingdom and caretaker of the princess. Because of the disease, no Saracens came forward to challenge his rule for some time. Toadsworth was aware that many of the natives wished him to use his position to revolt against Saraceland, but he had another plan. Instead, he made sure that the princess had toadstool friends, attended toadstool schools, and in every other way was raised in the native culture. In this manner, he avoided conflict with Saracalan, and ensured that the princess, when she took the throne, would look out for the interests of his people. All right. There's the story of the founding of the Mushroom Kingdom, explaining the relationship between Saras lands, the Mushroom Kingdom, and the Koopa Clan. It explains why humans are so rare in Mario games, why the Toadstools love their princess so much, and, as I may explain in a future video, will help us understand why some middle-aged plumbing renaissance man saves princesses and owns a castle. It will even be important for unveiling the secret motivations of Kamek and the Magic Koopas, and how Bowser became king of the Koopas. But now it's your turn. What did you think of this history? What problems or strengths do you think it has, or how would you make your own history? Are you looking forward to the next episode? Let me know down in the comments. Mario Lore doesn't get enough love, so drop a like and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing, as I plan to do more in the future. With that, thank you all for watching. God bless.